You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at bbmglobalnetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Clutter of parenting advice and overcome the pressure to be a perfect mom and raise perfect kids. Welcome to Moms Without Worry with host Dr. Karen Cassidy. Karen encourages you to embrace the messy hilarity of parenting by explaining the scientific strategies that will help you and your kids thrive with authenticity, joy, and good humor. So please welcome the host of Moms Without Worry, Karen Cassidy. Welcome to Moms Without Worry. I'm your host, Dr. Karen Cassidy, and you are on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio Live. So, have you ever wondered what happened to your peace of mind between your vow to be the best mom ever and all the dirty diapers, preschool playdates, homework projects, and teen drama? Have you secretly wished you could move to a magic country that has no standardized testing, no college entrance exams, and no tantrums in public? Or have you gone online about a parenting problem and been confused by all of the contradictory advice and opinions? Or have you worried if your style of parenting is somehow bad for your kid? Well, if you answered yes to any of these questions, you are in the right place. So... I want you to grab your latte or your tea or maybe your cocktail because we're in the time of COVID-19. And if you need to, find your closet to hide in or your bathroom so you can get some privacy and join me and my special guests for a time of getting clarity about who we are and how we're raising our kids. Also, I want to remind you to join me on the Facebook Moms Without Worry community group where you can get free videos every week on the latest best advice about parenting and being a mom without worry. And that's where you can also download the weekly challenge sheet that has links to special information and free gifts from our special guests. The other thing is... I know that right now we're all going through the stay in place orders for COVID-19. And if you're feeling like you're about to lose your sanity, I have a special group on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Central Time entitled Avoiding Going Crazy with the Ones You Love. And you can register for that by calling 847 559 8415. We'll be doing this group by Zoom, so it's 847-559-8415. And then also, every Thursday, I have a Facebook Live at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time where you can type in your questions about what to do with your family to help you all thrive during this time of stay safe at home. So, before I introduce my special guest, I want to help get your head in the right space. I'm going to ask you some fun questions here. So, what percentage of women feel comfortable negotiating about their pay versus which percentage of men feel comfortable doing that? So, what percentage of women feel comfortable negotiating their pay versus the percentage of men? Another question, what percentage of employers expect you to negotiate your beginning salary? So this is when you don't have a standard minimum wage jobs, but what percentage of employers expect you to actually negotiate? And the last question is, what is the average amount of money women lose over the course of their career when they fail to negotiate to the same degree that men do about salary and benefits? So what's the average amount of money women lose over the course of their career when they fail to negotiate to the same degree that men do? 
So if you want to try and give your answers to those questions or call in and ask questions of our special guest or me, you can call in 866-451-1451. And again, that number is 866-451-1451. And now... I want to introduce someone really special, Cindy Watson. And Cindy is this really cool woman that I met in a leadership workshop. And she is the founder of Women on Purpose and also the founder and managing partner of Watson Labor Lawyers. She is a sought-after attorney, award-winning author. She's an international speaker, a motivational speaker, and a trainer and a coach. And she's really known for her passion and commitment and ability to inspire women to stand up and be their authentic selves and, in particular, to negotiate effectively in all different areas. She has this new weekly podcast called The Art of Feminine Negotiation. And what is really cool is um, she helps women get what they want everywhere from the boardroom to the bedroom. So ladies, you got to love that. And lastly, Cindy has three kids aged 21, 22, and 23, so I bet she's got some grumpy college students home right now doing the state <laughs> place orders, Cindy. And, and I just want to welcome you to Moms Without Worry, Cindy. I'm so glad you're here. Um, oh, so thanks for having me, Karen. Yeah. So, Cindy, you know, I, I'm going to start this off by a little bit of a confession. Um, negotiating has not been my natural strength and it's something I have had to struggle to learn and um, being a therapist you know forced me to learn how to do that with my clients um, but in truth be told I was always more effective at negotiating if it was on behalf of someone else. So on behalf of my employees or my business, um, or if it was my kids, um, I'm sure that many therapists and special education teachers and people probably would have considered me a tiger mom, but I have (laughs) ex-husbands who can tell you I was a total marshmallow and, uh, (laughs) and I was the person that, um, you know, didn't want conflict, wanted to make the peace, and just had this, you know, unfortunate view of myself that somehow it wasn't uh, appropriate for me to really stand up and say what I wanted. Um, And to, um, I didn't know how to do that in any kind of context. So I am so curious, you know, since you're a woman too, how how did you even get interested in this topic? Because usually it's a topic women avoid. <laughs> so please tell us. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not alone. Let me put you at ease right out of the gate because I, I find most women feel that they're not effective negotiators. And it's one of the reasons that I feel so passionately about this subject, frankly, because one of the things I came to realize is that All of life is a negotiation. You know, whether you're negotiating with your kids or your intimate partner or the bank or the insurance company or a local contractor or whether you're in a profession where you're negotiating multi-million dollar, billion dollar deals, all of life is a negotiation. Heck, the most important negotiation we often have to undertake is negotiating with ourselves. So you could say it's one of the most important skills that we'll ever learn, and yet we're not taught it. Or if we are, as in law school, which is for me where I started having some epiphanies uh, Mm. in the practice of law, we're taught that it's that sort of, you know, bring your game face, take no prisoners, leave nothing on the table approach that we believe constitutes a successful negotiation. And I finally, after 30 years of practice in law, I suddenly realized we've been duped into believing that. And it's just simply not true. Yeah, well, what you're describing there, that, you know, get in there and fight, no holds barred. I mean, that that's what comes to mind when I think of negotiation. And I, I realize, you know, as a professional that that's not true. But I know for me, that was one of the things that was so off-putting about that idea was like, you know, how can I be a, a kind, respectful, compassionate yeah. person and negotiate with someone? Because it seemed like it was this macho, um, yeah. you know, fight to the bloody death thing. And yeah. and then when I, you know, ran into that, those kind of people, I was just like totally undone because that's not my natural style is to get in there and, you know, 
punch, you know, like until someone's bloody and blue. Um, so that's, that is so tough uh, to you know, to realize that, well, we're going to need to take a break here, but when we come back, Cindy, I wanted, I'd love to talk about what's the difference between a feminine approach versus a traditional masculine approach. So this is Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host on Moms Without Worry, and I am with my special guest, Cindy Watson, attorney, award-winning author, and power trainer and speaker to help women learn the feminine art of negotiation stay tuned and we'll be right back if you seek a courageous advocate prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations carol ann hamilton is the one for you Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration, plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Welcome back to Moms Without Worry. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host, and I'm with my special guest, Cindy Watson, founder and owner of Women on Purpose. And Cindy, we were talking about, you know, kind of how we can get caught up with this idea that negotiation is somehow a, you know, sort of the, I guess you'd call it a verbal equivalent of a cage match. And, uh, you know, and I know for myself, you know, that one of the things that made it hard for me to think that it would be really you know, appealing to become a good negotiator was the idea of like, well, that's for bitchy women. Um, and yeah. who wants to be that, you know, and, and Absolutely. then, and then quite frankly, the women I've known who come across that way, they, they, uh, they don't appeal to me. So I, could you tell us like, what are some of the myths and misconceptions and what is it that, that many women fail to understand about negotiation? Well, you've hit on really the key point and what was sort of the impetus for me for creating the Art of Feminine Negotiation program. And that's because people, the, the number one myth is that negotiation is all about the bark and bite. And the second big myth is that women aren't effective negotiators. And I find the women that I work with, most women will fall into one of two categories when it comes to negotiation. They either feel that they're not effective negotiators and they shy away from it for the reasons that you described, Karen. They don't want to be seen as a bitch. They don't want to be seen as hyper aggressive. They don't like the idea of conflict and so they tend to shy away and as a result they don't get nearly what they deserve or you know what they want or what they're entitled to they don't feel they have a voice or the respect that they deserve at the other end of the spectrum we have women who feel well obviously the only way to succeed at negotiations is to really bring that eye of the tiger and they end up bringing this very masculine energy to the table that in most cases is not authentic and there's a really high price to pay for that and the real impetus for me, I realized after 30 years of really high stakes negotiations, that if, I, if you look back and examine what are the really key markers for making, you know, that mark and make a really the most effective negotiators, ironically, I've broken it down into a, a, a very simple mnemonic. I call it the mm -hmm. R-FIT model. So it's A-R-E-F-I-T. 
So it's, mm-hmm. and they, those are the letters that stand for the best skills that you need to be a negotiator. So the first one is assertiveness, and I'll come back to that in a second. But the others are rapport building, empathy, flexibility, intuition, and trust. And if you give that list to almost anybody, at the very least, five out of six of those traits, for sure, rapport building, empathy, flexibility, intuition, and trust, almost everybody would consider to be feminine traits. And these are traits that for you moms out there listening, you use these skills every day in a myriad of ways. And in fact, some would say women are more skilled in these out of necessity. Rapport building, women for so long, historically I'm talking, didn't have rights. We of necessity had to build the skill of rapport building. Heck, it wasn't that long ago we didn't have the right to own property. Empathy, right? Women are much more likely to put themselves into the shoes of the other party and having that flexibility. Heck, our lives involve juggling a million plates and keeping yeah. them all fitting in the day so you don't let them drop. Mm-hmm. We are, these are natural skills that we have. The problem is we have never been taught to see them as negotiating. So when you start bringing those skill sets with intention to your daily life, Karen, it is an absolute game changer. And if I can just speak to the issue about I love that you called about how great you'll step to the plate and advocate for others. That is a, tends to be a universal problem across the table with women. And a quick mm. tip that I've come up with for your listeners on that, I call it the mama bear tip. Because women okay. are, this goes back to assertiveness, because women feel like, oh, I don't like to be assertive or I can't be assertive effectively. And yet when we advocate for our kids or a parent or anybody who's vulnerable, we are absolutely able to bring assertiveness to the table. So for me, the little tip is if you're advocating for yourself at first and you're finding it challenging, just be the mama bear for your own bear cub. We all still have that little girl inside us with our little girl hurts that we've been carrying around in our life. So it's just an easy mindset shift. Just think about the next time you need to advocate for yourself. Picture yourself as that mama bear advocating for the little bear cub in you, your own little girl, little bear cub. And it's an absolute game changer. When you're able to bring those skills authentically, it's, you're going to get better results. You're going to have better relationships. You're going to have longer lasting results. You're going to be more persuasive and more influential. Wow. I, I just, I love the acronym and the skills you're listing because, you know, quite frankly, I hadn't thought about it that way before. And when I, I listened to it, I was like, yeah, I do all that. I, I've got that down. I just um, tend not to think of it that way, that these are negotiating skills uh, because I, you know, I'm referring to sort of that masculine model of the, you know, the sports field or the battlefield. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and, well, and I actually think it's one of the problems in the world today because when you've got women who are shying away from, and, and let me say out of the gate, this isn't necessarily a gender-based thing. When I talk about masculine and feminine energies, I'm talking about that sort of yin and yang. We all have masculine and feminine energy. And the problem is that women have been sort of duped into believing that if you're going to succeed, the only way to do that is bringing that masculine energy. And I could speak from personal experience i got to tell you, Karen, there's a big price for that because I think my natural style would have been bringing this rapport building. And I remember mm-hmm. in uh, law school, I took a negotiation course and you ended up being effectively negotiating for your marks. And I won virtually every one of those negotiations. And wow. uh, except, interestingly, it wasn't until I started the practice of law many years later that I realized back then, I was naturally coming from an RFIT model, rapport building, empathy, flexibility. Then I started the practice of law where I was led to believe that I had to sort of rip out the other side's throat to be effective. And, you know, I can share with you some. Yeah. Well, let's yeah, let's get. I want to ask you more about that right now. We need to take a break for some commercials. So I want you to hang on here. And when you come back, you're going to learn more about the feminine art of negotiation. You're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio Live. 
Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interests through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host on Moms Without Worry, and I am with my special guest, Cindy Watson, award-winning author, attorney, and women's empowerment coach and founder of the program Women on Purpose. So, Cindy, you are telling, starting to tell us that your natural inclination during law school was to be a very effective negotiator, and then you got into the field of law where um, there's... You know, we've all seen it on TV and heard about it, and some of us have personally experienced it in the courtroom. It's a bloody, ugly world out there. What happened to you that got you mixed up in terms of negotiation? Yeah, it was a beautiful epiphany that I wish had come a lot earlier, to be quite honest, (laughs) because, you know, I'd had this sort of natural negotiating ability that I never really thought of much. I just, I grew up in a house where we had spirited discussions around our sort of little kitchen table in my little rental apartment building, and, and I was led to believe that I had a voice without realizing what a gift that was. And then when I started the practice of law, I practiced social justice law. A lot of my clients were trade unions, so it's already a male-dominated field. And within the trade union, as you can imagine, I was almost always the only woman in the room between my clients, the other side, the other counsel, the adjudicators, and you're this young 20-something-year-old coming out. And I felt like I needed to really sort of bring that eye of the tiger to be to have my voice heard and to be taken seriously. And I'm not yeah. gonna lie, I, I was very effective. You know, my clients loved it. They called me the Barracuda. And in my naivete, I, I wore that like a badge of honor. I'm now embarrassed to say. But at the time, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can bring yeah. it, you know? Yeah. But it starts to, it's like a little toxic poison because it's not authentic for most of us. And it starts seeping into your personal relationships and your professional relationships. And I remember one time having a conversation with my son. And I could see him getting more and more frustrated. And I'm thinking, what is going on? And all of a sudden, he just bursts. He's like, for God's sake, Mom, does every discussion with you have to be an argument that you win? And it sounds like wow. nothing, but I swear, Karen, it was like somebody ripped my heart out and held a mirror up. And I just yeah. I didn't like what I saw. And it was in the reason I mentioned the law school negotiating court is not to boast, but because it was in that moment that I thought back. And I'm like, you know what? I used to get the most incredible results, and I wasn't bringing it. I would sit down in that one-hour class, and we'd get a zero if you didn't get a deal. And I was like, okay, we've only got an hour. Tell me what you need. Tell me what the facts are. There's got to be a deal for here. I put myself in their shoes without even thinking about it. Before I created yeah. the outfit program, I was building rapport and trust and being flexible and trusting my intuition and bringing that empathy. And then at the end of all of that, then bringing assertiveness. 
And let me just say, yeah. assertive does not equal aggressive, and this is the problem. That misconception is what, ha- what has most women shying away. Assertiveness just means confidence, and that confidence comes from your knowledge, and your knowledge comes from preparation. And you can prepare for any negotiation. In fact, women tend to be much more likely, that feminine energy, to sort of be prepared. And in my programs, and I'm happy to share resources with your listeners, all kinds of tips, little easy tips about how to best position yourself and prepare for those negotiations. So that, for me, was the moment when I, the, the nemesis of creating the um, sort of art of feminine negotiation, or the genesis, rather, of creating the art of feminine negotiation came, because I'm like, these skills that made me a great negotiator, and when I look at the greatest negotiators out there as well, you don't have to bring the eye of the tiger. You have to be able to be assertive and stand your ground and ask for what you want, all of which are easy skills to teach and we work on in my programs, and I've got tons of free resources on my website for your listeners to go to. But ultimately, just bringing that authentic, intentional rapport building and empathy approach will absolutely profoundly change the results that you get for yourself personally yeah. and professionally. Yeah, I know I, I that just that's so beautifully put the way you said that. You know, one thing I'd like you to to ask about is I realize another problem that women can have when it comes to being authentic is being able to identify and say out loud what you want. And I know I was raised in a climate where, um, you know, you were supposed to be very quiet about that and very modest about what you wanted. And you were allowed to show delight if someone else guessed it right, but you weren't really supposed to tell them. And and that was something I had to learn. And I see that with a lot of women where um, there's some confusion sometimes about well, what do I really want and what am I looking for? And um, do you have any advice for us on how to, how to start identifying that if that's a difficult thing to do? Absolutely. Again, that's a beautiful question because it is such a problem. One of the things we end up typically with the women that I work with spending so much time at the front end, and it's part of the job that I love the most, is sort of overcoming some of those limiting beliefs. Because as women, we're taught to be people pleasers from a very young age. And as much as we think we've moved away from it, there's still that sort of, you know, it's not ladylike, is, you know, is one element. Mm-hmm. Or even just, oh, being selfish is not appropriate. So we end up martyring ourselves and wearing that martyrdom like a badge of honor as well. And, you know, like 62% of men will routinely ask for more money when they are given a starting salary and a job as compared to only 7% of women. And of that Mm -hmm. rarefied 7% of women who will ask, most of them still ask for less, right? So one of the exercises and tips that I'll give, um, I mean, the first is getting comfortable with ask, ask, ask. And as women, a lot of that comes from that fear of rejection, fear of hearing the word no. So we do a lot of work on desensitizing yourself to the word no. And I really encourage uh, for your listeners out there as well to sort of make a little game, make a game for yourself um, of going for no. And there's actually, it's a kind of a tacky little little book. There's a book called Go For No. And, and the premise is basically whatever it is that you need. So if you're in sales, for example, or, you know, whatever it is that you're going to be going for, if you need to make 10 sales in a week and typically you get about 10% of the people that you're pitching, for example, then you, instead of going for those 10 yeses, where we have all this angst about, oh, but when I get those no's, and it holds us back from really stepping into the full force of our power. If you actually go for the no, like actively get yourself desensitized to the word by going, I am going to set a target to get 100 no's. And then you're much more likely to keep stepping to the plate and going. And even as you start getting those few yeses, instead of taking your foot off the gas, you're like, oh, I still got 96 no's to get. So let me get out there and get in it and and have celebrations along the way. You know, we don't celebrate our failures enough as well. So reframing that no, that no just, A, it doesn't mean no forever. It maybe means no for now. Or it allows us the opportunity to figure out how to reframe it or re-ask it. So that's my, my big tip on that is to really yeah. go for no and desensitize yourself to that word. That is what a, a powerful suggestion. Um, and I, 
I feel anxious just listening to it, but I know I got to do it. Um, we are going to take another <laughs> break here. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host on Moms Without Worry with special guest Cindy Watson. You are on BBM Global Network Live and Tune In Radio. And come right back and we'll tell you more about the feminine art of negotiation that will transform your life. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. I'm so glad you're back. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host on Moms Without Worry, with Cindy Watson, award-winning author, attorney, inspirational speaker, and founder of Women on Purpose and the program, The Art of Feminine Negotiation. Um, You know, we were just talking about you know, sort of barriers for women. And, you know, one thing that occurs to me is, you know, there's uh, a lot of interesting research. Could you tell us about some of the research you're aware of about where just being, um, I guess I'd call it toxic femininity. Um, Mm. (laughs) So could you give us some information about this to help put this in perspective and why negotiation is so important for us women? Absolutely. And it's funny because that was the word I was just going to use here. I think it's really important by way of perspective for women to, to see in terms of the limiting beliefs and the baggage that we bring to the table, those things that hold us back. So they've done a lot of studies um, around young women writing their SATs as well to see about what our identity as women does to in terms of performance. Does it impact on us? And sure enough, when they gave uh, half of the control group in advance of writing their SATs, had to check off their gender, just merely check off a box whether they're male or female, and the other half didn't. And consistently, it's surprising even to me, um, the half that had to identify their gender in advance of writing the test performed more poorly. And I'm like, think about the implications of that for a moment. Just the, the very concept of tapping into our own femininity, our own gender, makes us show up and underperform. So it's no surprise in some ways that then we get out there and we don't ask for what we want. So, you know, the gender bias studies are incredible. It's not just we love to point fingers and say, oh, men have been holding us down. But we need to clean up our own backyard because internally we need to start really recognizing, owning, acknowledging, and addressing our own gen- internal gender biases that affect how we show up for ourselves and vis-a-vis other women. It's right. They, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, that one thing that's been so exciting for me, this um, women's leadership program that you and I have been in, is it's all about the feminine power and the idea of... Uh, y- 
there are aspects about being female, being a woman that are incredibly creative and powerful and there's something to be embraced and they often don't get acknowledged. And, you know, when I think about like what it took to push my kids out into the world, you know, and I had run marathons <laughs> and been, uh, you know, nationally ranked college long distance runner. That was the single most athletic thing I ever did was bringing them (laughs) into the world. And I was shocked at how much effort it took. Um, So, you know, when we're talking about those steps that you have, could you give us an example? Like, let's say you have your partner, your husband or your wife um, or your partner, and there's something that you realize you need to negotiate where you're starting to identify in yourself. I really want something and it's not happening or it's, it doesn't feel like it's being respected or honored in the way that I, yeah. I realize I really need it to be, not just want it to be, but really need it. What do you suggest um, to our listeners? You know, how do you handle that? How could you talk about it to your partner? That's a great question. I would say that just think of the five W's. It's probably that in the time that we have, the simplest tip I can give you, sir, and it's just the tip of the iceberg, obviously, but the one that I think is a real, that will most move the dial at the front end, and I don't know of other sort of negotiating experts and teachers who talk about it, and I, I think they're really missing a mark on this. So we, we think about the five W's, who, what, where, when, why, when we're investigating for a police investigation. And I really invite your listeners to think about with intention bringing that. So let's say you want to have that difficult negotiation with your partner. Part of that preparation process that gives you the knowledge and then the confidence and therefore the ability to stand in your assertiveness in that negotiation is doing this five W process. So start with the why, for example. Really consider, so you've got this prickly issue you want to chat about. Think about what's your deep why. Like if it's a money issue, you know, it's almost never really just the money, right? If we're being honest with ourselves, it's what that money represents. And that's the same with any discussion or prickly issue in a relationship. It's so often not what we've led ourselves to believe it's about. So really consider what is my deep why that's driving this? And then do the same for the other. What is my partner's deep why? Are they feeling disrespected? What is motivating? Is this bringing up childhood baggage for them? So really considering that why. Then consider the when. You know, as kids, we intuitively knew that, right? You know, if your parents were in a really crappy mood, we just somehow instinctively knew enough to not ask for that thing we really wanted. And yet, yeah, as adults, steer clear. We use that skill. You know, we forget. So choose your when with intention, right? Like, I mean, you know, asking your partner, for example, like, you know, for to discuss the prickly issue if it's the third quarter of the Super Bowl, probably not the best timing, right? So, so yeah. think about your when with, with strategy. You're where as well, like some, you know, some discussions need to take place in the bedroom and some discussions you're not going to get as good a result if you have it. Some of them are, you know, maybe some discussions are the kind of discussion you have when you're on vacation or, at, you know, at a bar or, and then considering the what more deeply, like, you know, what are we talking about? What do I really need out of this? What am I saying? What is my body language saying? What are they likely hearing? Like going deeper and deeper on that. And the who, who should be involved in this conversation? Is this really just between me and my partner or does it involve the in-laws, for example, or maybe one of the kids we need to bring in? And again, I've got a free resource about five W's on my webpage. You can, you can share that at the end Great. so they can go deeper on that. But I think if you start applying these five W's with intention, when you go into those negotiations to ask your partner for what you want, you are going to so dramatically increase your persuasive powers, you will surprise yourself. You'll bring such depth to the negotiations and it'll be natural and authentic. And again, coming with intention, just remember the R fit as well. How can I build rapport here? Let me put myself in my partner's shoes for a moment. What are they likely thinking? Let me try and be flexible and open. And also questions is another really biggie, the power of questions, learning how, when to use open questions to get more information and listen, active listening, you know, so, so important. And remembering that we all have different styles of communicating as well, so that you're really listening to them by, and when you've got a prickly issue, sometimes posing hypothetical questions can be a really a really powerful way to get it. What, I'm just brainstorming here, but what if we were to think about this? And there's no pressure for either side either. You can get away with a lot through the use of sort of hypothetical and powerful questions, right? 
Yeah. No, I, what I love about everything you said is it's kind of like you took like the uh, couples therapy manual and condensed it for conflict management. <laughs> and, and, you know, every, and, and I can I can testify, you know, everything you're saying is based on research. And the, all of these things, they, they apply different skills that we know work for every human being. Um, and that, uh, you know, I love here, you've got this nice, simple system that makes it user friendly um, for someone to think about dealing with these, you know, sort of hot button issues where you really do have to negotiate and go into it with the idea of we both need to win. We both need to get yeah, something. Really simple uh, systems because people are likely to remember it then. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to take another break here. And when we come back, we're going to give you ways that are guaranteed to help you be a better negotiator with your family, your friends, your partner, your boss, whoever. You're going to love it. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy with Cindy Watson on Moms Without Worry on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio Live. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back. It's Dr. Karen Cassidy, the host of Moms Without Worry, and I'm here with my special guest, Cindy Watson. And we're talking about applying the feminine art of negotiation. And one wonderful thing that Cindy's been explaining to us is we already have the tools that we need to be fabulous negotiators. And one thing, um, you know, that we've been hinting at but haven't really stated is that when we're one of the things we're talking about with negotiation is it's not a competition where someone's trying to win. It's a mutual interaction where both people feel like they won and they came away mutually satisfied. And so, and that's one reason all these skills that Cindy has been talking about are so priceless is because you need that rapport, that empathy, that ability to listen, the ability to know what you want and to say it and to ask questions in order to achieve that win-win thing. So I know right now, Cindy, um, many of us in the world, and probably almost all of us who are listening to this, are dealing with the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and having to live in close quarters where we're working, um, recreating, doing everything with a small group of people. And our uh, tempers are probably wearing thin. I'm hearing a lot of that from my patients. And yes. 
<laughs> feeling isolated from the people we wish we could be with. And I know that the time for negotiation is coming up. And in fact, I even saw um, on one of my news feeds, and it may have been the New York Times, is guidelines for holding a family meeting, which was reflecting. <laughs> okay. Could you help us with this? We need your help right now okay. about what you think about and do with some of these things that are starting to rub us raw yeah. so that we can continue to live in peace and thrive together. I love it. And thank you for sort of for calling the elephant in the room because it is. I mean, let's face it. These are tough times. These are very different times at the very least for all of us. And I think it's important to acknowledge that. So, you know, everybody and, you know, your listeners and everyone in their families are no doubt feeling any combination of, you know, fear, grief, frankly, you know, chaos, angst, fear, disappointment, even rage, you know, in the mm-hmm. wake of this sort of pandemic. And so it's important to acknowledge that and give voice to that. And, you know, give yourself permission and others in your family and beyond to feel whatever feelings arise. And also, though, to then make a decision not to stay there. So stay there. Like at the outset, I talked about, you know, all of the various negotiating with your kids and your partner and et cetera. But the first and most important negotiation, especially around sort of crises times like this, Karen, is negotiating with yourself. So I really invite your listeners to to think about negotiating their mindset. Choose not to stay in a place of single-minded focus on the virus right now because, you know, where your focus goes, energy flows, and your thoughts and the meaning that you give to them create your reality. So now if ever there was a time, choose to reach for a better reality, right? Like we're all scrambling and you know, feeling like we're on walking on quicksand here. And and to be clear, I'm not talking about, you know, sticking your head in the sand and some Pollyanna pie in the sky. I get that there's significant impact here. But, you know, what if instead we come from a mindset of abundance and generosity, right? Really striving to bring forth yes. the best of our own humanity. Um, you know, not hoarding toilet paper, but dropping off rules to our neighbors. And the key is we can't yeah. control the external circumstances today. You know, we can't, individually, we can't control the virus. We can't control, but what we can control is how we choose to react. And it is a choice. And those challenges provide opportunities, you know, to be our best self, to lead, to support those in need, to care for each other. Uh, you know, and part of that, I talked earlier about the power of questions. Like instead of, oh, why is this happening? Or what's going to happen to me? Like maybe we start asking ourselves, how can I experience even deeper connection and love in this moment, right? Like, and it's important yeah. language there, just a, a present tense, not like as if you already have it, and how can I deepen it? And especially thinking like with your kids or your partners, you know, pay really attention for kids in particular. I think it's really important right now to be sharing your own feelings, right? It gives your kids familiarity with the language and shows them that it's okay to talk about it, right? Apply those five W's we just talked about as well. Have those discussions with real intention about when you choose to have the discussions, where you choose to have the discussions, you know, what's your deep why on these? Some things, maybe this is the time to let them go. So really be clear yourself about that. And if ever there was a time to really apply sort of active listening as well, where we are, um, you know, know that we don't need to solve anything. Sometimes in these kind of times, you just need to listen as well. So don't interrupt. Don't put words in their mouth. Even if they're struggling to find the words, let them find their way to say it, right? Building that rapport and trust and empathy and being flexible. But, you know, as we're juggling all these stressors with kids home from school or your work shut down or at-risk loved ones or canceled travel plans, you know, whatever your current sort of blade in the gut, as they say, is a moment to identify where you feel it. Find it in your body. And, you know, minimize it. Let yourself shrink it and start choosing to look at the gifts all around you before you start having those discussions with your loved ones. When you feel yourself getting into a state of angst, negotiate with yourself. Do some really deep breathing as well. Go through the five W's about it and take a look around at the things you have to be grateful for right now because, It's impossible to be in a state of fear or angst or anger or rage or worry is a killer right now when Mm -hmm. you're in a state of gratitude. And encourage your kids to do that. Sit down at the table together and start implementing gratitude practices as a family, right? And now is the time to really use this as a gift and an opportunity to slow down within your household 
and to be able to really be fully 100% present, have new projects and creative endeavors that you do together. Heck, if, especially with daughters, for mothers and daughters, everybody sit down and create a brag list. Do a brag video, right? It's, it kills mm-hmm. two birds, three birds with one stone, you know? Sit down and brag about all of the things that you love about yourself and that you're great at. Start teaching to push past those limiting beliefs right now and then shoot a super fun video, an outrageous, audacious, over-the-top video. Like find <laughs> new, creative ways to be together in this time and see it as a gift. I think that would be the biggest piece of advice that I would give in terms of approaching how to negotiate the coronavirus and negotiate yeah. your mindset and how you show up. I, I love that. that. That is such an appealing idea. But I hope I see some videos like that from some of our listeners. That would be so <laughs> precious with a, some mom-daughter brag videos. Um, well, we're going to take one last break here. And then when we come back, we're going to give you those answers to the questions. And Cindy Watson is going to give you a summary of her hottest tips to help you become a star feminine negotiator. I'm Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host on Moms Without Worry, and you're listening to BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio Live. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. I'm so glad you're back and you're listening to Cindy and Watson and myself. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy. So you've probably been figuring out the answer to the first question was what percentage of women feel comfortable negotiating versus men? And Cindy answered this one, 7% of women, teeny tiny. On the other hand, 62% of men are comfortable negotiating their pay. And we know that when you look at the career builder research, it shows that 73% of employers expect candidates to negotiate their initial salary and benefits. Okay? That's what they expect. And then someone did an estimate of the average amount of money that a woman who is a professional will lose over the course of their career because they were in that 93% who didn't negotiate. $1 million, ladies. The okay. estimate is that you are losing at least $1 million over the course of your career if you did not get in there and negotiate. So that means we got to get there. And this isn't just for work. This is at home with your teens, about chores, with your partner, your husband or wife, um, your friends, about who does what when you're organizing a party you can use this anywhere so Cindy could you give us a summary of what are your hottest tips for our moms on becoming wonderful negotiators okay well I would say I'll go quick here so I the first tip I would give is check out my uh, web page and get uh, access to a bunch of free resources so just go to www.womenonpurpose.ca womenonpurpose.ca and some of the things we talked about there the five W's I talked about would be one super hot tip and there's a free ebook called five secret weapons to more effective negotiating and it talks about the five W's in much more detail and how to apply them absolutely free go grab that. There's also a free Women on Purpose Blueprint about how to really live into your life on purpose and with passion that will help you keep your sanity if nothing else. And also a free ebook on no fear negotiating. So that's being able to show up to those negotiations with no fear. It's F-E-A-R. No fear, no ego, no attachment, no reactivity, short, quick read. And always, and again, the resources are there. I would say if you come 
to your negotiations with that R fit model, knowing just to be with intention, assertive, rapport building, empathy, flexibility, intuition, and trust, you are already going to be miles ahead of other people you're negotiating with. And these are skills you already possess in spades. Yeah, I, I love that. So ladies, that's three free eBooks. So you got to go there because you need this. I know I do. Uh, and I've already downloaded it, Cindy, because I had this information ahead of time. So women, I want to remind you that we are all here to support each other. And during this time of COVID-19 stress, I want you to remember all your sisters around the world, all your fellow moms, and to give them compassion and support and love and to not be critical if you think someone isn't following the restrictions properly for social distancing Mm -hmm. and to give each other compassion. Remember, we're all doing the best we can with what we have. I also want to remind you to download the weekly challenge sheet from the show today where you can get the links to Cindy Watson's wonderful books and her podcast and it's going to help you. I guarantee it. And then also, I want to remind you to go to the Mom's Without Worry community group page or the Moms Without Worry page. That's where you can get the challenge sheet and also the link to share this broadcast from iHeartRadio with your friends and family. And I want to encourage you to post your comments and your likes um, and share what we have to say here because I'd love for all women to have the kind of confidence that Cindy is talking about so that we, we see who we really are and we feel able to step up and work with other people to create a mutually satisfying existence. Next week, this is really exciting, we're going to be talking with Vanessa Callahan from Raising Our Resilience, and she's going to talk about ways to improve your child's mental well-being during the stay-at-home orders quarantine. And she's also going to talk about her hot tips for successful homeschooling and keeping your kids active and happy and lastly if you want some help with avoiding going crazy with the ones you love sign up for my therapy group on tuesdays at 7 p.m central standard time anyone can drop in it's at 847-559-8415 and join me too on my facebook live every thursday 1 p.m central Thank you, Cindy Watson from Women on Purpose for joining me today at Moms Without Worry. It was such a treat. And Cindy and I hope everyone listening stays well, healthy, and worry-free. You've been listening to Moms Without Worry with your host, Dr. Karen Cassidy. Join the conversation each week as Karen provides a simple yet clear roadmap for helping parents strengthen the connection with their children on Karen Cassidy's Moms Without Worry. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.